Welcome to the Healing Triangle training video. In this video, you're going to learn about all the different steps of the Healing Triangle and how to navigate through them um, step by step and what might come up at each stage and what some are some of the things we can do to help us along our way. So to begin with, to break down what the Healing Triangle is, it's really a roadmap to bring love and healing back into any relationship, uh, whether it's with a part of yourself, a concept, a theme, another person, really any relationship. This triangle, everything inside the triangle is conscious awareness. And the steps, I'll just read them out to begin with. We've got acknowledgement, resistance, understanding, compassion, acceptance, honor, embrace, celebration, and appreciation. Underneath here, you've got everything that's unconscious or whatever you, is, you are unwilling to make conscious. That's things like patterns like avoidance, um, denial, self-deceit, where we lie to ourselves, delusion, um, repressed emotions, attachment, anything that we're not really fully conscious of or doesn't stay in our conscious mind and conscious awareness. So we'll get started at the acknowledgement stage. At this stage, it's really about bringing things into our conscious awareness. So as soon as we bring something into our conscious awareness, we, it starts to move, okay? In the unconscious where things maybe are repressed or pushed down or shut down, where they're not getting any airtime, um, they don't get to be seen or even felt, um, we really are keeping it stuck. That's what is creating the stagnant energy. So if there's trauma, if there's past significant emotional experiences, any emotion that we haven't fully felt, the pattern can be down here in this uh, unconscious section. So as soon as we bring it into the conscious awareness and acknowledge it, we are creating, um, it's coming alive. It's coming alive, it's becoming activated again. We're reactivating something uh, potentially old that's just been lying there under the surface, uh, maybe layers and layers deep, um, and now we're putting our eyes on it. So what comes with that is, is a whole different experience. That acknowledgement stage, not just is the uh, emotion or the thing moving, but where it's happening in our bodies as well. It's a physiological experience. So for us to feel through an emotion, it needs to move through us, and that's where it really begins. And often it can be um, different sensations in the body. Uh, maybe it, it might be uncomfortable at times. <clears throat> often there will be discomfort at that stage because there's, those are the things you don't want to look at. Things that maybe you have shame around, or that, you, that you want to hide or you're embarrassed of. Uh, things from the past that you feel guilty about. Things that you uh, really don't like about yourself or your past. These are all the things that you are wishing that didn't exist or that aren't going to come back for you again or things that you don't wish to revisit and you're kind of hoping that you might not have to. Um, that's why there's that unwillingness factor, right? That can be there too. So it's not always. It can be just things that we haven't seen. Maybe we've got trauma that we've blocked the experience or the memory of and we want to see it, but we just can't access it because it's so deep in the unconscious. So this is really where we get the ball rolling. We can do that in different ways, really. Um, we can do that in the way of uh, asking ourselves questions. We can do different types of uh, meditations. We can do active meditation. We can Things can come into this stage in many different ways. Maybe experiences just present themselves, events, um, people can trigger us, these kinds of things. And as a trigger, something is being reactivated in you. Whether you want to acknowledge it while that's happening or not is up to you. Sometimes when we get triggered, we just push it back down and then we continue on 
um, moving on with our lives without really acknowledging what's there inside us. So there's different ways to get there. Um, and some common feelings and emotions around that stage uh, would be potentially stress, discomfort, um, even fear, anxiety, really feeling uncomfortable there. Um, that's also where shame can really come up, guilt. It can be quite heavy at that, at that point. When we move on to the resistance stage, in this stage, we really are pushing against what we've acknowledged. So it's not like we automatically accept something that comes into our awareness. We might, but usually in this stage, it's things that we're fighting against, pushing against that we wish was different. So it could be that you wish a person was different, you wish you were different in an experience, um, you wish your past was different, something about the past was different. So we're resisting really seeing it for what it is right now, or resisting um, engaging with it openly um, and in a neutral kind of way. So what happens here is we really have to ask ourselves, um, what do I wish was different about the past? Uh, what, what are some of the emotions that might exist there in, and feelings would be resentment, anger, rage, fury, um, disappointment, betrayal, uh, distrust, things like that where we're really not willing or allowing it to come into our conscious awareness or close to us. So we're really trying to create that separation from whatever is in that stage, right? There's real um, tension in the space. If you have a relationship where you're with someone else and you're, in the, you're spending a lot of time in the resistance stage, then you might experience more tension in the space rather than feeling relaxed and open and fluid. Uh, rigidity can be experienced here as well where things just aren't flowing the way you might want them to flow. So to get through this stage, we've really got to, um, to really be ready and willing to feel the emotions there. Um, the emotions that, are, that we've been often pushing back and not fully, um, fully feeling. So it could be anger, but maybe you've only felt 20% of that anger. Maybe you really haven't acknowledged that it's actually rage that you were feeling. This can be a past, let's say it's a past experience from childhood and you were so angry and so in a state of rage but you got told not to be angry or being angry was bad um, and you've just held on to that since then. And now when anger comes up, you stop it. You don't let it come out. Uh, you don't even let it move through your body. So it's stuck. That's what gets us stuck at these stages. So we have to be ready to really, really feel the emotions for us to move to the next stage. And the way we do that is often through uh, inner dialogue. We can actually start to communicate with ourselves. It can be in meditation. It can be in many different ways. Even in conversation, we can do this, right? When we start to open and we start to soften. Because at the understanding stage, it's about empathy. It's about coming into um, a softer, more open place where you are willing and ready to listen so you can hear and see whatever hasn't been heard or seen. At this stage, we really start to let our guard down in a way because we're not pushing back so much anymore. Where really it's a, it's a stage of welcoming. It's saying, what is there for me to see that I haven't seen? I'm open to, to allow new information in. And that's why as you move through these steps, you're continually increasing your conscious awareness. So it's like when you acknowledge something, you bring something in and then you move it to resistance. Each time you take a step, you're actually going to bring more conscious awareness to it. 
And now you become aware of what the pattern was or what the thing is that was down here, you can actually start to move it through. And as you do, you'll gain more access to more information. So you might unlock memories, you might unlock certain um, different things from the past, you might see the truth more clearly rather than having maybe a very narrow view of, of what it was or perspective. And then it just grows from there. So when you get to understanding, you've got more awareness already. And it's a really key part, really key point um, and stage, the understanding stage, because this is where the healing really starts to begin uh, in a relationship because we start coming back down from the energy of our minds, a lot of that energy, and really into the heart. We start opening the heart at this stage. The body starts getting relaxed because we're in a receiving mode. We're starting to op become receptive to whatever needs to come to us and whatever, whatever we need to, to see. So really important stage, um, and it's going to happen through choice. We really have to choose to, for that to happen. Um, it can be vulnerable for you to go into uh, because of that softening and you're more exposed. This information that's going to come in, it could hurt me. It could um, create more pain for me or suffering. But if I'm on the path of healing and bringing love back to this relationship, and then I have to be ready to receive new information for me to relate with whatever it is in a new way, in a more loving way. So from there, um, at this stage, the understanding stage, some of the emotions that we might feel um, and the feelings would be uh, empathy, softness, uh, more relaxed, starting to come into a little bit more um, peace and acceptance. And there can also be eagerness where we're really actually um, eager to, to hear what's, what is there. Curiosity can be there as well where we're wondering what it's going to be, what's coming our way. We're so open that we're really willing to see whatever it is. But it can also go the other way as well, where the challenges of this stage it can be anxiety, it can be fear, it can be a little stressful, where we're not sure what's going to come up. We're not sure what we're going to have to look at or what we're going to have to really deal with. And then when you move to compassion, we move to compassion. And that's where the love starts to flow. That's where we start to bring love into it, where the understanding stage, we start to really see what's been happening and what's going on. We start to see from the other's perspective. And we open up the communication. But in compassion, we start to really bring love into where it's at right now. So without changing it, so we start to get much less desire to change the thing or the person or the situation. And we start to really bring some love in that I'm not only just understanding where you're at, but I, I'm, a, I'm open to loving you where you're at right now. Okay? The most important part of the compassion stage is actually forgiveness because this is where forgiveness actually comes in and is the bridge into acceptance. As soon as we are able to reach compassion and move into forgiveness, a lot of the tension dissolves. A lot of the, um, a lot of that stagnant energy in the space is really cleaned up. Forgiveness is a, a very powerful cleaning tool in a way or cleansing process where when you forgive all that defensive energy, all the stories, they can actually start to really break down very quickly and dissolve. And 
the old energy can dissipate and you can actually have a new space where you can form something new. But it's kind of like anything that you're still holding on to from, from back here can really be let go of in that forgiveness uh, process. And that's only going to come when we reach that compassion stage and start bringing more love and more heart into the equation. At the compassion stage, some of the emotions and feelings we can experience is love, um, more peace, really uh, increasing our um, vulnerability as well, um, but also empowered. Compassion can feel very empowered uh, and it's like a state of an elevated state. We feel um, maybe more, of course, more accepting, more truthful. Um, some of the other things you might feel at that stage would be trust. You might start to trust more. You might start to bring in more pieces of uh, whatever feels soft to you and also even more receptive. So really, um, we might start feeling more a sense of nurture. We want to nurture the other person and give them love. Um, it can even be more around giving, that we want to start giving something to that person or the event or that part of us that we're working with. Then, as we go through forgiveness and we get to the acceptance stage, this is really a key point because at the acceptance stage is also the point of neutrality. And look at how much conscious awareness we've got now. We've got a whole, we've covered half the triangle. So we're almost at, we're at 50% at least of the full, getting the full story, the full truth of of what's happening but in terms of um, acceptance and the point of neutrality it's where we've dropped the emotional charge so our stories are really gone um, we have felt a lot of the the emotional charge that we've held on to from the past or that we're running our beliefs and our stories and we come to this point of no desire to change the other. So no desire to change the person, no desire to change the part of you or the event or the past and you can really, this is really where we're being with what is and we're accepting what is as real essentially. And then we have much more of a chance to change that. At this stage, depending on the dynamics, the dynamics really start to adjust here, where if someone was above you um, or you've put yourself below them, you'll come back into balance. It's also where space really gets aligned in this, in this acceptance piece too, where if someone was too close to you and you're entangled or kind of enmeshed into, it was a messy relationship, you might be able to form a healthier space when you get to this acceptance point. Uh, and the same thing if someone was very distant from you and far away, and maybe you want them closer to your life, but you couldn't accept them or you couldn't forgive them, then they can come back into your life at that point. But without that process and moving through these stages, you might be there sometimes, but you might be spending more time down here in the resistance stage or the acknowledgement or un un the unconscious stage. So it's really like with this triangle, you're not always going to be, it's not permanent. The placement isn't permanent, right? You change locations. You might start bringing bit by bit parts of yourself over and around and moving through this triangle one by one. And the more you pull across, the more you can spend time at these sections and then you kind of normalize each new place. So you've really got to choose where you want to go with it, um, with each relationship. It is, a, it is a conscious choice. For example, you might want to just accept um, 
a friend that did something to you that betrayed you in the past, but you're no longer friends with them, so you don't need to take it all the way to appreciation. Or you might just want to come to a place of compassion um, with maybe a part of yourself or someone that you do want in your life and that you maybe your partner, you might want to take it all the way to appreciation so you can be in a deep state of appreciation and love more often. And that's the, the dominant kind of energy and stage that you guys have together and, and, uh, and keep active. So when we're at acceptance, that's the choices that's available to us. What do we want to do now? Um, there's clarity that comes there. It's a common feeling and really um, a lot of peace at this point, a lot of peace. Uh, the desire, like I said, to change is gone. So it allows more of our true desires to come through. Instead of being here and saying, oh, I want to fix this relationship or I really want to love this person again or I want them in my life. It might not be like that. When you get to acceptance and you clean out those emotions that were maybe driving some of those thoughts, desires and beliefs, then you've got a chance to see things clearly and make a new choice. And that's often what I suggest um, to a lot of people is to get clear first and then make your choices of where you want to take it rather than choosing from maybe the resistance stage. It's like, we need to get through this processing because often there's other um, stories and beliefs running that are affecting our judgment, affecting our whole system, our nervous system, our body, our mind, our hearts. But from here, it, we can make a much more um, in this more like it's easy to be in a state of alignment with our true selves, and then make our decisions and choices from there. Um, moving forward, so. Then from acceptance, moving into honor. Honor is about respect. So it's really about bringing in, obviously, more awareness and more information to get there. And we might start to choose to see more positive aspects of this person. Uh, more things that are that we want to focus on we've got a more positive focus of the things we love we start to see them more often and we start to choose to focus on them as well but it's really about I respect you for who you are and I honor you as you are without needing to change you and that can even be in the past as well I honor who you were in the past you can do it for a part of yourself maybe that you've been working on healing that you didn't like about yourself and now you can shift into Oh, I honor you for that because I understand why you were doing what you were doing and why you were the way you were and I totally respect that. So that can really feel um, empowering. It can feel uplifting. It can make you really happy. At that stage, we can really feel happiness. We can start to feel more joy and satisfaction, contentment, all things that can really happen at this honor stage, right? Because we're going down towards appreciation. Now it's not so much hard work like moving up the triangle. Often these are just things that we can do with our focused attention and effort into moving down this, this side of the triangle. Um, so that's a nice stage to be in. Uh, a lot of the time staying in honor is is perfect it can allow for beautiful relationships to to exist and to be alive in that space and that honor space where two people can honor each other or you can honor a part of you or a situation really holding it in high or them in high regard that the, the beautiful it's a beautiful place to be and then again if you choose to go to embrace If you choose to go to embrace, it's really choosing to support them as they are. So again, no change to the person, but I'm now taking another step forward in my effort and I'm gonna support you for who you are, as you are, or I'm gonna support that situation and really embrace what is there for what it is.
so once you have that understanding and of why someone did the things they did, let's say it's a part of you and you understand why you were the way you were when you were a child, the things that you didn't like about yourself, you now get it. You now understand that there was a valid reason for it and they did it with purpose and you did it for maybe it was to get love or to get the, uh, a need met, like being feeling safe or cared for or validation. But once you understand all those details, you can really start to get behind them in a way. Um, depending on the pattern or whatever it might be, you might say, wow, I really didn't like that about that part of me, but now I totally get it and I'm in full support. You did the right thing and you did what you knew you had to do with the awareness that you had and I fully embrace you for that. You are, it's really saying that you're perfect and you did exactly what you had to do. Yeah? So that's really embrace. It's really saying that you did what you had to do and I support you in that, even though maybe previously you thought it was something terrible or something that you didn't like or that you regretted or that you wish was different. It's really, really full, um, full backing of, of who they are or what, what happened. Um, that's a power, that's a really powerful place to be because it's like, I support you. So there's, it feels very empowered. It feels more forward moving. Um, it takes effort because you're really putting your energy into something here. Like you do, you have to put energy into supporting someone. Uh, whereas there's less energy maybe to honor someone. Oh, I'm going to hold you. I, I respect you. But embrace is really about, um, it's very, it's an active stage. Okay. It's an active stage where we are really investing energy into maybe building a relationship, um, a new relationship. So we're going to put some attention into that. And that might come from more communication. It might come from just um, a time investment. It might come from just any, any form of energy, but it's going to require moving some energy into that. When we move forward into celebration, obviously we have a lot more awareness now. There's so, we're seeing so much more of the truth. We really come to the point of not just not just I support you, but I am really um, celebrating and. really um, cheering you on in a way. I'm cheering you on where it's like if you took it from embrace and go to celebration, that part where I was just, I'm just said, I'm going to support you as you are, it's like it's now saying, yes, this is great. This is more than perfect. It's fantastic that you did what you did and I'm going to celebrate you for who you are. I'm going to celebrate that situation for what it was. I'm going to add more appreciation to it. I'm going to really add more joy, um, more elation, more en again, more energy. I'm going to put more energy in and we're going to uplift it even more. This is where it might be with a part of yourself um, when you start taking it to the celebration stage that you begin to do more things for it or for that person where you want to share more love, share more energy, um, do things that you would do if you appreciated them, maybe give them gifts, maybe take them out, maybe play more, have more fun, do things that you love. This can be, like I said, even with just a part of you. So that's really what that stage is about. It's not just... Um, it's not just behind them it's really holding them up high and saying yes you did it and um, I'm proud of you kind of thing and then we move into the appreciation stage which is where we have full conscious awareness we're able to reach full truth of um, of the situation or the relationship where we're able to step into the broader perspective and actually see from this kind of higher view where we can observe exactly what's going on we can see ourselves and the other person or 
um, the situation or a different part of ourselves really from this high level and that's where we can really appreciate everything as it is and we can actually pull out the full value of the relationship, of the experience, of the part of us and use it in a beneficial way in our lives now. It's a really key point. The appreciation stage is really where we can unlock all the gifts and the treasures of a relationship or of an experience. And we get to take all of that energy that is inside us because we have that full awareness and now we can use it with awareness in our lives moving forward. So no matter if the experience in the past you saw it as negative or harmful, Um, The context doesn't matter because you've moved through all the emotions and you've brought it to a point of where you appreciate it and you're grateful for it and therefore you can then start to really use it in a positive beneficial way in your life now. The appreciation stage is really magic. Um, If you spend a lot of time there, then it's naturally easier to be grateful. It's easier to see the, the beautiful aspects of people, of yourself, of situations. And essentially you are super open and in a state of receiving in that mode as well. So there's many things when you appreciate something, you are attracting more of it and bringing more of it into your life. So I love the appreciation stage. I love feeling grateful because um, there's an energy about it that I know that Whatever I'm grateful for, I'm bringing in more. I'm building that uh, energy inside me. So that's where you can take it. You can really take any relationship there, uh, no matter what has happened or no matter where it is, even if the person's not alive anymore. um, Or in the past, it was really about that you didn't see, uh, you saw it as the worst thing ever. It's always there's the potential to take it to the appreciation stage. Obviously, it's choice. You don't have to take anything there. Um, But if you choose to, there's some real magic at that stage um, where you can, like I said, use it in a beautiful way in your life now. So that's the healing triangle. Um, It's a tool. It's a roadmap to really bringing that love back into any relationship, um, to bringing acceptance into any relationship and to heal really can it is a powerful way of moving forward especially because this, the first stage is you get to know where you're at by looking at this you can even take some of your relationships now and say where am i spending most of my time maybe it's resistance maybe it's celebration maybe it's appreciation and then you get to choose where you want to be where do you want to spend most of your time if it's not in resistance and fighting and feeling frustrated then maybe it's taking it to acceptance and then you get to keep choosing, where do you want to take it? Where do I want to take this? And then doing the, the work that's associated with moving from each stage onto the next one. Um, and that's it. It's really about feeling empowered in your relationships. That's what this is really about. So use it, play with it, have fun with it. And I hope it can help you and support you in your journey and healing yourself and healing relationships and just really having beautiful connections and relationships in your life. Thanks very much for watching.